Latia, and today's episode is all about the truths and myths of squirting. Now, if you are a listener to the Love Atia Experience podcast, you already know that depending on when you're listening to this, there's either an episode coming out that's all about squirting or the episode is already out. So feel free to head to the Love Atia Experience and learn a lot about squirting. But I want to make a condensed version in this YouTube video just to answer some questions as to what's up with squirting, is it pee, and all of the other major myths that are out there in regards to what female ejaculation and what squirting actually is. First things first, can all people with vulvas squirt? The answer is no, and that is totally okay. It doesn't mean that you're broken, it doesn't mean that you are unable to reach maximum heights of orgasmic pleasure because your body may not be able to produce this feat, I would say, but only 54% of women have said statistically that they've been able to experience orgasmic expulsion. And in that, in my mind, that means either squirting or female ejaculation, because as we're going to learn, those are two totally different things. So if you do not know how to squirt, one, it doesn't mean that you technically can't squirt, but two, if you are one of the other majority of people with vulvas who are not able to squirt, it doesn't mean that you are inefficient in sex in any way. Another fun fact is that 19% of women or people with vulvas have said that they have squirted nearly every single sexual encounter that they have had. So maybe not every encounter, but nearly every encounter. That's something that I can't necessarily say applies to me, but I know that they have uh, titles out there like, oh, you're a squirter. Sometimes I wonder like, can I call myself a squirter if it only happens very rarely? And it takes a lot of patience and time and pleasure. For me to get there so we're going to talk about that but yeah i thought that, that was a very interesting fun fact lastly 10 percent to 54 percent of people with vulvas have said that they have experienced some kind of form of female ejaculation which i think is a very important thing to note for those of you who may not be able to experience this or just haven't experienced this yet i just want to make sure that i reiterate you are fine nothing's wrong because only 10 to 54% of people with vulvas or women have experienced this in their lifetime. Now, one of the most important questions that I feel like we should also dive into is, is squirting pee or urine? I have to say that from all of the research that I've done, and let me just note that it is very sad, the little amount of research that is out there in regards to women and sex in general, and there is so much misinformation out there, and some people would just like throw facts around, but from what I've experienced and from what I've studied over the last couple of years, I've learned that what comes out when you squirt is a totally different liquid fluid compound of liquids than what comes out when you urinate. The reason why people believe that they are two in the same squirting and urination is because it filters through your urethra and it also filters through your bladder. So your bladder empties when you squirt, but the difference is, is that when you urinate, you drink water, your bladder fills over time, right? And then you release it and then you have to replenish that. When you squirt, studies have shown that you don't drink anything before the study, right? You squirt and have this, you know, and then your bladder instantly fills back up. Also, squirting has four different compounds, which I will list above. So squirting contains all of this. Now, one thing that you may say is, see, well, I have a cat hair on my lip and it was killing me. Oh my God. Ooh. One thing that you may see is urea, I think it's called. And that is another reason why a lot of people believe that it is the same as pee, because I think that pee carries some of urea, because once again, it filters through your urethra. urethra. Hope I'm saying that right. But this is from my knowledge, what I'm receiving from all the information that I have researched thus far. Another fun fact is that the squirting liquid comes or originates from your bladder because there's no other place in the woman's body where you are able to hold that much fluid. I thought that was a very interesting thing. Now it's time to bring out my handy dandy laptop because I want to make sure that I say all this right. But it says, some of the white fluid comes from the skin glands or the female prostate. These glands are located in the front wall of the vagina and some studies show they drain via ducts into the lower end of the urethra. Now another interesting statistic that I learned about skin glands and the female prostate is that 30 to 40% of people with vulvas do not have skin glands. And I'm like, why? We probably won't ever know because, you know, women, science, <laughs> they don't care. But I just think that that's interesting that maybe that can also attribute as to why certain people are not able to have this squirting phenomena and that's okay. Now are squirting and female ejaculate the same thing? 
in my world, yes and no. In certain articles, yes, in certain articles, no. Because again, information is just all over the place. But from what I perceive, I think that the word ejaculation, when I think about it when it comes to men or people with penises, is a liquid that comes out at a force, right? Or maybe not at a force, maybe it trickles out. And that to me is still ejaculation. But I think that there are two different forms of female ejaculation and I think that squirting is one of those forms. So I'm gonna revert to my handy dandy laptop to read exactly verbatim what they say in this article regarding female ejaculation versus squirting and you'll understand why I just said what I said. There are generally two types of female ejaculate. Squirting fluid, this flu fluid is usually colorless, odorless, and occurs in large quantities. And then ejaculate fluid, this fluid more closely resembles male semen. It is typically thick and appears milky. And then it says these two types of ejaculations can happen independently of one another or at the same time. Female ejaculation and squirting slash gushing are two different phenomena. The organs and mechanism that produce them are separate and different. Female ejaculation is the release of a scanty, thick, and white fluid from the female prostate. Squirting is the expulsion of a diluted liquid or diluted fluid from the urinary bladder. But what I think is interesting about this is that there you still have what I would call prostate juice in your in your squirting. So like you saw in the last graph, you had urea, creatine, creatinine. <laughs> uric acid and then prosthetic specific antigens so to me that's juice that comes from your prostate so that's where it just gets a little bit mixed up even in that article that I just read they first referred to squirting as a certain kind of female ejaculation but then said they are two different phenomena so you really have to just use your critical thinking skills when it comes to this topic because again women science now how do you squirt you may ask i'm going to say that for the next video because i want this to specifically just be about the truths and myths of squirting but i do want to end this topic on the shame and stigma regarding squirting because i think that first of all let's go back to the pee i forgot to mention that during certain studies they have seen traces of pee or urine in squirting fluid and like i said that's because it filters through your urethra it filters through your bladder so of course your bladder is just not going to deep clean imagine like your bladder like scrubbing the walls before your squirting fluid comes in from your you know so i just want to ask like why is urine so disgusting to people because all it is is literally just like liquids like that you have in taken yourself and then vitamins and minerals. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not gonna kill anybody. So I guess that's the confusing part about it because it, that's where the shame and stigma comes from because it's like, oh, squirting is just pee. And what if it was? Like it's not, but what if it was? It, it, it's really okay. So that's the part that really aggravates me because I think that as humans, we've demonized certain forms of sex as being disgusting and then certain forms of sex as being beautiful. We've also, maybe not even certain forms, but just certain bodily functions. We think that some are okay and then some are not. It even goes all the way back to men being able to show their breasts on TV versus women being able to show their breasts. It's literally just a little bit more cartilage. What are you so afraid of? So the same goes for certain bodily fluids. So I just want you to know that if you have any shame or stigma surrounding squirting and you squirt, know that that is not a bad thing. Know that this is your body allowing yourself to experience something truly orgasmic and we're going to get to to orgasms in a second and we'll end on that note but this is your body releasing something during a moment of peak pleasure and it's nothing to be embarrassed of even when it comes to queefs i used to be very embarrassed of queefing because it's literally just air that gets trapped in between the two organs when they combine and i think i'm going to start to learn to love how to queef or start learning to love queefing because it is just what it is you can't control it and what's the point of, of having the shame surrounding that so Last but not least, let's talk about orgasms and squirting. You can have an orgasm without squirting and you can squirt without having an orgasm. And I thought that was very, very interesting considering when you watch porn, you definitely will see um, what looks like a woman having an orgasm, but she could just be putting on a show and she might just be exploding these liquids. Another thing though about porn is never compare yourself to what you see in porn because sometimes people will literally insert stuff in them to squirt it out. So I just want to make sure that I noted that. Like, do not compare your your like squirt trajectory based on what you've seen and <laughs> other people do because sometimes it's not everything that you truly believe that it is. So just know that you can definitely have an orgasm and experience your peakest pleasure without 
squirting and you can squirt without having an orgasm. It might feel good. I know when I did it, it felt like I was seeing God or like I was seeing the sun. I think I mentioned this in my podcast. It's like the Teletubbies face, you know, the Teletubby baby face as the sun, but it wasn't a baby because that's weird. But it was like a Teletubby face. Like it was like God as a Teletubby sun, whatever I think God looks like. So yeah, that that is my... That is my conclusion to what squirting is, the myths and the truths about it. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I will definitely do some follow-up videos. But I just feel like these are the basics. If you want to learn a lot more about squirting, you can head to the Love It Tia Experience, which is my podcast. Check out my squirting episode and learn. Just, just take some notes, y'all. Take some notes. Don't forget to give yourself a hug for me. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. And to be kind to yourself and to be kind to animals. And subscribe. I love you. Mm -hmm.